I've been fighting for it for, I mean, I, I voted for John Anderson way back in the 80s. Well, you know about the you know, money, I've though. You know about the money. these parties my entire adult life. I understand and, and that. Lo- Alex, as long as we keep electing Democrats and Republicans, this is what you're going to get. No, I understand that, Jesse, and you're right about the whole left-right control paradigm and special interest owning both, but you had celebrity and were a sharp, intelligent guy and, and barely won, uh, and then they kind of figured out how to block people like you in the future. It's the money. The people know both parties are shot, but but the money only pushes the establishment candidate. I mean, what do people do? Just vote for th- uh, for third party no matter what? Yeah. I guess that, yeah. Do it as a protest vote. I do it. I go there, and when there's any in election, I go there, and I pick out any candidate who's not a Democrat or Republican. That's and what I, I do. Vote, and I protest vote. To me, if you go there and pick them out, then you're, play, you're playing their game. Ultimately, they still get to be in charge because they got you to vote for them. And I'm not saying you, Alex, as an individual. I mean everybody out there. No, I understand. Let's jam a call in. Bill in Connecticut, you're on the air with Jesse Ventura. Hey, guys. How you doing? Hi, Bill. Good. How are you? Real good. Hey, I got a question for, for both of you. Um, it's pertaining to legitis- the legitimacy of Barack Obama being the president. And I'm just kind of surprised that nobody talks about it at all. Well, that's because and- the media has chosen... To, to focus in on that early on instead of all the other things that were wrong with Obama that we can prove all his lying about wiretapping and torture and police state and wars and special interest. They always focus on that because you can't prove it one way or the other. Jesse Ventura, what's your take on the whole birth certificate thing? I, you know, I, I'm not, I, I guess I haven't paid much attention to it at all. I, 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 you know, to me, how could they, how could he not be a citizen? Well, McCain was born in the Panama Canal Zone before there were bases there. That's another question. How could both candidates have questionable lineage? But the point is, they come from parents who are from here. I mean, if they happen to be working abroad, that doesn't mean you're not an American citizen, does it? Well, his mom was from here. The the, the dad was a communist from uh, Kenya. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Maybe you can be the ambassador to Kenya, Stan. Well, all the whole country will be run like Kenya. No, Stay I there. Back in a, one minute. Back in one minute. Ambassador to Cuba. Better surfing. Everything we said came true. Everything we've done has been right. Okay, Governor Jesse Ventura will be with us till about uh, 18 after. End of the next segment. We're taking your phone calls right now. Patriot in Wisconsin. You're on the air with Jesse Ventura. On the air with us talking about his new bestseller, Don't Start Revolution Without Me, out in paperback. Go ahead, Patriot. Hi, guys. Um, you were talking about being uh, ambassador to Cuba, but if we're having relations with countries like Cuba and North Korea or China or Iran, doesn't that sort of legitimize their governments? Well, what? Their governments don't exist? What are well, you going to pretend that... That uh, these countries have be them communists, that somehow they don't exist, so we just ignore them and they'll go away? Come on, get in the real world. They're communists, they're, that's what we got. You, you know, there's no thing in poker. Sometimes you've got to play the hand you're dealt. Do I support communism? No. But they do exist. Look, and, look, and, this and you argument. Can't shut yourself off from that fact and pretend they don't. Let me throw some at the caller and, and, then, and then get his take and then yours, Governor. Look, detente always stops wars. It's always good to try to talk to somebody. Absolutely. Bloodshed should be the last thing. I mean, take our founding fathers. They talked for 10 years before they declared uh, you know, independence in 1776 against the tyranny of the king. And then you're in the right when you've tried. But Iran, we overthrew Iran in 53. Our government stages terror attacks. That's in the news today. I mean, Iran doesn't deserve to be attacked. And and by being mean to Iran, that makes them get more hardline people in power, like Atmeg Dinajid, comments caller. Well, yeah, I understand that. I'm not necessarily talking about going to war, but I'm talking about something like uh, when the communists took over in the Soviet Union, when the communists took over in China, do you think it's a good idea to have uh, uh, business relationships with them, or shouldn't we sort of try to uh, 
Well, well we, we've been doing business with China. We've been doing business with Vietnam. And uh, why wouldn't we do business with Cuba? Let me tell you what happens. I, I, you know, to me, remember, it's, it was interesting when I was in China. Do you remember when we blew up their embassy? Yes. Yeah, okay. So I asked some, uh, some people who lived over there, I said, how did the Chinese people take to that when we blew up their embassy? And these people had lived there for 10 or 12 years. They said, well, at first they kind of gave us some steely-eyed stares a little bit initially, but they said within 24 hours all the Chinese people shrugged off and went, eh, government. You know, we got to remember something. Government thrives on creating hostilities between we the people. Look, here's the issue. During the decades of embargoes against Iran, guess the one U.S. company that was allowed to ship in oil field and nuke components, Halliburton. And then Dick Cheney got caught doing it and said, oh, well, it's no big deal. We have a subsidiary and the Caymans doing it. When you put those sanctions on them, it only allows corrupt select groups to sell the goods, and that's what these governments love. Jesse? I agree. Again, it's, uh, and you're not harming, you know, you're, when you when you put sanctions on and all that, you're only harming the people. Do you think Fidel Castro misses a meal? Do you think somehow our sanctions make his life somehow more demanding? No. All you're doing is hurt, hurting the poor people of Cuba in not doing business with them and in not attempting to raise everybody's lifestyle. It's a win-win, and these embargoes are not win-wins at all. Jesse, we know the truth. You just want to go surfing on those great beaches that supposedly have great waves. Well, I could do it anyway. All you got to do is sneak in there. It's By a way. shame, though. Why should, okay, <laughs> we live in a free country. Why should I have my passport revoked from me if I decide I want to go to Cuba? By the way, I saw my four-year-old uh, actually get up on a board this weekend at the Texas coast. But just for a second, she got up on it for a second. It was pretty neat. Oh, well, next time it'll be two seconds, and then it'll be three seconds. And before you know it, she'll be riding those waves all the way to shore. I tell you, surfing's very addictive, isn't it, Jesse? Yes, it is. And, and it's, very t it's very difficult, and people don't realize that it's a life dedication. And I love to say this. If people were that dedicated to a religion, would they call them religious bums? <laughs> I'm as brown as a coconut from the beach. I love the beach itself. We'll be right back. You're listening to GCN, the world leader in independent talk radio. I was just talking to Governor Ventura. He might come in studio with us. I've already had him down in Austin once. Great guy. Uh, when he's driving down I-35 in his RV in September or October to go down to Mexico. And Jesse, you were telling me uh, you've got a new T-shirt. Well, that, that's enough information, Alex. The listeners don't need to know no more than that. Oh, your oh, new yeah, secret? No, my new T-shirt that I wear now, it says, I got it down in the Baja. It says, won't work for anything. <laughs> and, and won't that's, work that's, for anything. That's the lifestyle I'm living now. I, I won't work for anything. There's nothing that I can be offered that would require me to go to work and inspire me to do so. But there's a positive for that. Since I don't want to work anymore, that means I won't be taking up a job from somebody who does. Okay, I've got two more questions for you, and we're going to take calls for the 10 or so minutes we have left with you. Okay. Uh, Victor, and we appreciate all the time. Make them easy so I can get to the callers. Okay, well, no, these, now this is a heavy question, and, I, and, I, and I, wanted to, I was sitting there at the beach with my family this weekend thinking about this interview, and I wrote these notes. What makes you know Jesse Ventura tick? But more than that, I was sitting there with the sun setting, with the moon up, watching the Texas coastline, and, you know, I was sitting there thinking, what is this planet? You know, what is the sun, the moon? We're in the middle of the galaxy and the universe, and, and we're these weird creatures, and we have children, and our lives are so short. And, and, and we're nothing but parasites. So I wanted to you ask gotta you... you got to think about that, Alex. We give nothing back. We only use... Well, I think that's what every life form does. You'd see life itself as a parasite. So I wanted yeah, to ask... But, we, but, but wait, we have no parasite that eats us except ourselves. Ourselves, the super predator class. So, so that was my question. What makes Jesse Ventura tick? What do you think, you know, the, the end of the universe is? What is this all about? I don't know, you know, but I, I, I will just say this. I, 
I feel very fortunate right now that I live in a place half the year where two two really ecological systems meet, and that's the ocean and the desert. And that's a very rare thing to be able to see these two meet and see the results of it. And it's a remarkable life to live and watch it and, and the pace of it, because even though the pace is very slow, it's constantly changing. No day is ever the same, even though they may appear to be. They're not. And that, you know, and right now, I like the solitude of that life, and I like the life of explora, ex, exploring simple things a little bit. You know, I've been caught up all my whole career in front of crowds and in front of, you know, getting name notoriety and becoming quote unquote this and that. And, and at this point in my life, I, I strive for a much more solitude, quiet existence.